Is marriage all about sex? What? <laughs> no. No, it's not. If it becomes all about sex, it's no longer a marriage. It's My husband wants me to do things that I know may not be according to our standards. What do I do? You do it, and then you raise him to a higher level. <coughs> Can two people stay married with different mindsets when it comes to marriage? Why and why not? Whenever there are two people, there are two different mindsets. Otherwise, one of them is a clone. You don't want to be married to your clone. So, of course, you're going to have different mindsets. On the one hand, that can be painful. On the other hand, that's what makes marriage real and, and, and precious and important. Because you're letting another mindset into your life, rather than closing yourself off in your own little cave. So can two people stay married with different mindsets? Of course. The question is, do they appreciate the difference or do they resent the difference? If you resent the difference, it's, it's a problem. Resentment doesn't help. It doesn't work. But if you can appreciate the difference, if you can laugh at the difference, if you can get together with your friends and say, my husband, you know, when it comes to this, he's kind of weird. He has a strange opinion about things. And it's wonderful. He's my husband. My weird husband. My strange husband. <laughs> but it's fine. You can do the same thing about your mother. She's your mother, even though she's a little weird. It's not terrible. And the same with your children. Your children will also have a different mindset. And you have to love it. You have to enjoy it. What if my husband and I aren't on the same page? Um, nobody starts off on the same page. You work your way towards the same page. You do it patiently, you do it thoughtfully, you do it gently. He really doesn't know how to cherish me or say the things I want to hear. How can he learn that? Um, what if he can't? What if he can't learn it? What if he really will never know how to cherish anyone? Would that be terrible? See, if he does know how to cherish, but he doesn't cherish you, that's a problem. But if he doesn't know how to cherish, he's not good at that. Like, he doesn't know how to play tennis. If he can't, he can't. There's nothing to, nothing to be upset about. The danger is, if he's not cherishing you, who is he cherishing? Or what is he cherishing? So let's say he loves to learn more than he loves to talk to you. He cherishes Gemara. You can hate him for it, or you can be proud of him. But if his... In other words, if his feelings are going in the wrong direction to the wrong people, that's a serious problem. If he just doesn't have it, he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. He doesn't have every talent. But you need to try to introduce him to new things that maybe in his family wasn't, wasn't seen, wasn't heard. But you got to do it uh, not out of resentment or anger, but simply because you want to you wanna introduce him to new foods that he never ate before. You want to introduce him to feelings that he never thought about before. But there's no reason to be, to be vicious about it or critical. The main answer is somebody should teach him, not you. So there should be this kind of conversation for men, too.
What are practical steps to experience true intimacy? Can you explain the macabre's role? Can a couple be satisfied with just sex and not intimacy? And what is the difference between sex and intimacy? All related questions. How do I know that I have reached the ultimate level of intimacy? <clears throat> okay, the, 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 the one line answer, the difference between sex and intimacy is sex is something you do, something you want, something you like, something enjoyable. Intimacy means connecting with a human being, merging with a human being. Not so long ago, uh, all relationships even among non-Jews, all relationships was intimacy. There were two people, they were connecting to each other, they were interested in each other, they wanted to have each other, and that's how they lived their life. Sex was something that, uh, that was shown in movies, movies that de decent people didn't go to, it was in these stores that had the boarded up windows because uh, it was illegal to, to let it show in public. It was pornography. Today, what was once pornography is now normal and, uh, and accepted in the average home. But it's really shocking to think, 20 years ago, no decent human being would ever admit to doing the things that they do today. Because that was pornography. So why did people pay to see these dirty movies? Because nobody would actually do it. So seeing somebody do it on, on screen was like, wow. Today, it's become the norm, the accepted average home practices pornography. So whatever you hear now, advice from the experts, from it's advice on pornography. So that again, the difference is, intimacy means being obsessed with a person. Sex means being obsessed with something. And then the person that, that, that you have sex with becomes part of the thing. And the person becomes a thing, an object. And that's why, you know, uh, if you weigh a pound more than necessary, if you have an inch of fat more than necessary, or if you're not exactly this shape, or if you're not exactly this size, or you're not exactly this color, then you're, then you're not the right thing. That's, that's basically the end of decency and of civilization. When people become things to each other, it's all over. That's how, that's how civilizations become extinct. So intimacy means the ability to connect to each other. And th by the way, the internet, not the pornography, just the internet, is destructive as well because people would rather text each other than talk to each other. Because talking to each other is too personal. So the joke is this guy calls his friend and his friend answers. He, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> he said, uh, hang up, I'll leave you a message. We don't know how to talk to a person anymore. We talk to machines. That's basically the bottom line difference between sex and intimacy. And you know, you feel it right away. You can tell immediately whether you are a human being that your husband is interested in 
or are you a thing that your husband is using? You know, the question about are, are tools acceptable and is there a Hasidic way of doing it? The worst thing is when you become a tool. When you're not a human being anymore, you're just a tool. As exciting as that may be, and as excited as your husband may get, this, this is going in the wrong direction. If this keeps going, your relationship will not survive. Can't. Unless you both stop being human beings, which should not happen. <clears throat> so again, can you use a tool? If, if it feels like you are the tool, okay. But where do you go from there? You can't let it be that way. You, you, it, can't become, it can't become the norm. You want something better than that. So you want to go from sex to intimacy. And it doesn't always work. Because intimacy is very delicate. It's very, um, it's very focused. And anything that causes you to lose your focus ruins it. You try again next time. But at least you have something that you're, that you're growing towards. You have something valuable that you're, that you're hoping for, that you're reaching for. And, and if from time to time you achieve real intimacy, your relationship will be miraculous. <laughs>